Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with Samar Ajawi. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued a royal decree pardoning and releasing 160 inmates who had been convicted in various court cases and served part of their jail terms. The royal gesture marking Eid Al Fatr reflects His Majesty the King's keenness to provide the pardoned inmates with the opportunity to reintegrate into society and participate in the Kingdom's development march. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Works and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, crowned the Rafa Club team in the presence of the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Rafa Club team won the Nasser bin Hamad Premier League 2021-2022 where Rafa beat Al Muharraq in the last round with four goals to one. His Honor Sheikh Nasser congratulated Rafa club team for achieving the title, pointing out that the strategy followed by Rafa club confirms the diligent work carried out by the club's board of directors, headed by Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid Al Khalifa and members of the board of directors in creating the ideal atmosphere for the team throughout the season, especially since it achieved the title without any loss, which confirms the distinguished professionals of the club. His Honor Sheikh Nasser indicated that the outstanding levels and the strong competition witnessed by the season is an indication of the progress of Bahraini football towards further prosperity and development, in addition to the discovery of many young talents that will be the future of Bahraini football. His Highness praised the tireless work of the Bahrain Football Association, headed by Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and all the working committees that made outstanding efforts to achieve success of the competition despite the circumstances that the globe went through as a result of COVID-19 pandemic, indicating that there are efforts appreciated and it underscores the outstanding Bahraini capabilities. The Jafari Endowment Chairman Yusuf bin Saleh Al Saleh said two places of worship have been revamped Salem Abu Iraq in Al Naim and Imam Al Mahdi in Sitra by the endowment. The move is in line with the order of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to immediately launch a development plan for mosques across the kingdom's governorates, inaugurate and restore 20 mosques belonging to the Sunni and Jafari Endowment located across different governorates of the kingdom as well as to allocate sites and expedite the design and construction of 12 mosques in Salman town. As Saleh praised the care for mosques and places of worship across Bahrain in light of the comprehensive development by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He also hailed the role of the government chaired by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa for following up on the needs of the citizens. He congratulated His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister on the holy month of Ramadan, wishing them health and long life to continue the march of development and progress. The Minister of Housing, Engineer Basim bin Yaqub Al Hamar, headed the Kingdom of Bahrain's delegation at the United Nations General Assembly high level meeting at the UN headquarters in New York to discuss developments in the implementation of the new urban agenda in UA and the Sustainable Development Goals SDG 2030. In his speech, Al Hamar confirmed that the volume of government programs, initiatives and investments launched by the government of Bahrain in the social housing sector has amounted to 3.3 billion Bahraini dinars. The minister indicated that the Royal Directive of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to provide 40,000 housing units and the government's efforts under the leadership of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to implement the goals encompassed in the previous and current government programs represented a quantum leap 
in the housing march. The Minister of Housing indicated that the government launched financial packages worth more than 4.5 billion Bahraini dinars to support the local economy with its various components in response to the challenges of the coronavirus pandemic. Al Hamar added that Bahrain has achieved many gains, including being ranked 42 out of 189 countries in the Human Development Index in 2020, as well as being classified among the countries with extremely high human development, as well as the proportion of the population living below the international poverty line at the national urban level reached 0%, and the average Bahraini family income increased by 47% between 2008 and 2016. The Minister of Housing also referred to the great efforts made by the government to cover the potable water networks and the proportion of the population connected to the sewage network by 100%, and its efforts to increase the proportion of women's contribution to the workforce to reach 42.8% in 2020. The Minister of Housing pointed out that the government is currently working on establishing a national urban observatory in cooperation with the United Nations Human Settlement Program, UN Habitat, to be the center for urban data and to cal calculate its various indicators. He pointed out that the plan for implementing the SDGs involve all official entities in cooperation with the private sector and civil society in implementing a series of procedures, plans and programs to achieve the sustainable development goals, including goal number 11, which stipulates making cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable. The head of the UN Habitat Country Program in Bahrain, Dr. Fernanda Lonardoni, emphasized on the importance of Bahrain's commitment to global agendas and its participation in the UN high-level meeting of the NUA. In this context, Dr. Lonardoni said there are valuable opportunities for Bahrain to take stock of its efforts in the implementation of the NUA and the SDGs. She said they create room for exchanging knowledge and giving visibility to Bahrain's efforts to achieve more sustainable cities. Uh, being here today at the UN headquarters uh, uh, to attend the high-level uh, political meeting uh, is it truly a matter of pride and honor. Uh, Bahrain, uh, among the 25 countries out of 150 countries, submitted uh, their reports uh, reflecting the achievements and the progress of the new urban agenda and the uh, uh, SDGs. Uh, of course, uh, uh, the report is uh, extensive uh, in the nature. Uh, it is a true uh, representation of what has been achieved uh, in Bahrain. And uh, after all, it reflects uh, the will and uh, the, the strong will of uh, our leadership uh, to support uh, the new urban agenda and the uh, sustainable development goal uh, in Bahrain. The Industry, Commerce and Tourism Minister, Mr. Zayed bin Rashid Al Zayani, chaired the 54th National Committee Standardization and Metrology Meeting. The meeting reviewed resolutions 27 2022 issued by the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to restructure the National Committee for Standardization and Metrology. It assigns Customs Clearance Department Director Walid Yusuf Ajour as Vice Chairman of the Committee according to Article No. 4 of the Standards and Metrology Law. The meeting reviewed several technical regulations and related decisions as follows. The Gulf Indicative Guide for Product Safety and Market Survey was further adopted in commitments of the Kingdom to the World Trade Organization WTO. The Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa Academy for Diplomatic Studies organized the fourth and final session of the Ambassador's Council program in its second edition with the participation of the Ambassador of the Republic of Indonesia to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Ardi Hirmawan, and the Ambassador of the Kingdom of Bahrain in Jakarta, Indonesia, Ahmed Abdullah Al Hajri. The session was moderated by the Director General of the Academy, Dr. Sheikh Amnira bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, in the presence of a number of senior officials of the ministry and its affiliates. In his speech, 
The ambassador reviewed the pivotal role of the Republic of Indonesia in its regional and international surroundings, referring to its distinguished geographical location in the Asian continent and its keenness on global economic stability through its presidency this year of the G20 summit. The ambassador of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the Republic of Indonesia praised the depth of the strong and distinguished relations between the two countries, which are based on solid foundations and mutual respect, and the progress and the development they are witnessing to achieve common interests and coordinate political positions in regional and international forums in a manner that enhances security and prosperity for the people of the region and the world. The Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism is stepping up its inspections of markets as Bahrain gears up for the Eid al-Fitr. Inspectors conducted visits to busy markets and other shopping outlets, including the central market in Manama as well as the meat market. Assistant Undersecretary for Control and Resources Abdelaziz al-Ashraf said the inspection teams reported sufficient fruit, vegetables and meat supplies at normal prices in the markets, noting that more quantities would be provided in the coming days. Al-Ashraf said the inspection visits focused also on retail outlets selling clothes, perfumes, shoes, Bahraini sweets and nuts to verify the validity of the promotional offers and prices. He said the changes that occurred in the price hike of some products were only temporary and for reasons related to the country of origin, adding that prices have stabilized in the markets. The Kingdom of Bahrain participates with the countries of the world in the celebration of the Immunization Week with the aim of highlighting the importance of collective action necessary to ensure the protection of society from diseases that can be avoided by vaccination. Marking the occasion and under the patronage of the Minister of Health, Faiqa bin Saeed al Saleh, the Public Health Department organized the World Health Immunization Week ceremony for the year 2022 under the slogan, Long Life for All. The Undersecretary of the Ministry of Health, Dr. Walid Almana, stressed that the Kingdom of Bahrain is committed to the prevention of infectious diseases targeted by vaccination by working to implement health strategies, developing and following up the progress of work plans and indicators of local programs, and strengthening the national capacity in this field through the integration between all levels of healthcare. For her part, the head of the immunization group at the Public Health Department, Dr. Basma Al Safar explained that the slogan of the World Immunization Week refers to the role of vaccines in preserving life, pointing out that the Kingdom of Bahrain is considered one of the leading countries in the expansion of immunization services since the 30s of the last century. The Central Bank of Bahrain has issued new regulations applicable to crowdfunding platform operators following a comprehensive review of the existing regulations which were first issued in 2017. The Central Bank of Bahrain affirmed that it continuously reviews all regulations and directives related to the provision of financial services in the Kingdom of Bahrain in order to update and enhance them in line with the developments in the financial sector and due to the increased demand for introducing new financing products to serve small medium enterprises and startups, the Central Bank of Bahrain, CBB, has been keen to review the crowdfunding platform operator regulations to be in line with the economic recovery plan for the financial sector in terms of providing a conducive environment for crowdfunding platform operators. The CBB explained that the evolving business models such as crowdfunding will potentially provide new alternative sources of funding for new businesses and startups and serve as a catalyst for growth of such businesses. The General Directorates of Port Security asserted the readiness of land, air and sea ports to receive Bahrain's visitors during the Eid holiday in coordination with the concerned authorities. The preparations aim to facilitate the traffic of travelers. The General Directorate explained the, the travel movement has returned to its levels as it was in 2019 after most countries had eased the COVID-19 precautionary measures. It has also stated that the required plans would be implemented and the number of employees and security patrols would be increased to provide all facilities for the travelers. And the Moon Sighting Panel will convene on Saturday evening at the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs to receive news and testimonies about the sighting of the new crescent 
signaling the advent of Eid al-Fitr. The council urged the public who cite the new Shawwal Crescent to contact the moon sighting panel. The sighting of the moon signifies the end of Ramadan, the nine month on the lunar based calendar. In the Islamic calendar, Ramadan is followed by the month of Shawwal. The first three days of Shawwal are celebrated as Eid al-Fitr.